Sí, hay... Pescado en escabeche. That's how we call it in Puerto Rico. It's like a pico fish. Pico fish. But I don't have the translation. I don't know the translation yet. All I know is it's pescado en escabeche. And for that, we use fish. Tra traditional in Puerto Rico, we tend to use swordfish. It just has to be cut this way. But if you don't have swordfish, it doesn't matter. That's some fish that you might not be able to use, like cod, but other fishes you might. So what do you need? Have about five, six teeth of garlic, a handful of clove, some black peppercorn, a couple of uh, bay leaf, uh, a handful, maybe about eight or nine uh, olive. You don't want pig in the olive, you want to unpick a white onion cut this way. Uh, you can have uh, a red bell pepper, but the one I have is the one that's preserved and you can buy in the store, the Cali Fancy Pimiento, but also the Cali Pimiento Morrón. You know, Pimiento Morrón will work. But if you don't have that, go with the red bell pepper. Extra virgin olive oil for the escabeche part. And you're going to need some also apple cider vinegar for the escabeche part. And then to cook the fish, you're going to need vegetable oil or some other type of frying oil. Doesn't matter. Uh, make sure you have some salt, black pepper as a minimum. But I like to have some uh, smoked paprika. Uh, coriander, cumin, and if available, have a little bit of lemon too. Why not, right? Tiny bit of lemon if you want to. Just a little squeeze. Get this baby a little bit wet. And now what you're going to do, you're going to add a little bit of salt. Or to your taste, you know. Little bit, lot, who cares. A little bit of common, not a lot, just a little bit. Some black ground pepper. I like to add coriander. Just a little bit. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of smoked paprika. Just a little bit. Then you're going to mix everything. Make sure you have this at room temperature, the fish, before you cook it. So things go smoothly. So here I have a pan, it's a little bit deep. Um, I'm going to use about a cup and a quarter of extra virgin olive oil. You don't need a pan this big. I have a little bit large, I should say, because I want you to see what I'm doing. One cup and a quarter, maybe one cup and a third of extra virgin olive oil. It's important that you use extra virgin olive oil. I have about three quarter cup of the vinegar. Once again, medium heat. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the onions. If you feel that you need more, feel free. But I'm just using this for illustration purposes. It's time to add the peppercorn. This is called escabeche, what I'm making now, by the way. The escabeche portion. Clove. Once again, smaller pan would have done. Let me put a little bit of this oil here. If you peppers are raw, the red pepper, make sure they cook so it might take you longer. But this one has been preserved, so it's not going to require a lot of cooking. I cut them. I'm not using all, by the way, the other portion I just put away. But see how they were cut. 
So add it to the to this. Look at this baby. Put your olive. You can cut your olive in half if you want to. I'm not going to waste my time. And now it comes to garlic. Once again, medium hip. You don't want this frying or anything like that. In fact, you might have to reduce the um, the heat soon. So what you want is with the garlic, you want to mince it. You can use something like this or something like this. You know that you squeeze it and you mince it. You put the garlic there, you squeeze it. And you mince it out. And you do the same with the other. You want to add the garlic flavor. How much you want is up to you. You don't want that garlic to burn, so you have to make sure that heat is monitored. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the bay leaf. I'm going to use two. And let it be. This kind of simmering is fine if you are paying attention, like moving it and stuff. But I'm going to lower it to a couple notches above low. Or a couple notches below medium. It's the same thing. So it's been about 12 minutes. This stuff is ready, by the way. I can smell it already. Now, if you red peppers, bell red peppers were the raw type instead of the one that was already soft and preserved, it's going to take you longer because you want those baby to be a little bit soft. You don't want them crunchy. So it might take you 20 or so minutes. And this is what I mean. If it's simmering like that, this is fine. This is a couple notches below medium. But if it's frying and going crazy, no, it's not. So this is sufficient. Look at the taste, you how beautiful. What you're going to do, you're going to turn this off and remove it from the heat. And just let it rest for about five or so minutes, or maybe 10. Let it cool down a little. So I have here vegetable oil. High heat, I'm going to reduce it to medium high. From high to medium high. And I'm going to start adding the fish. In about four minutes. Yeah, let me turn it around. Let me put the other side for about five. I said about four, three to four minutes later. I can tell that it's looking pretty nice. I have some paper towel here because I want the grease to drip out a little bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move these babies out, put in the paper towel with a plate. Let them rest for a little bit, or maybe five minutes. Look at this beauty, huh? So what you do now, you're going to put the fish in a container. This one is small, but that's fine. And you're going to add the excavation top, because you're going to put this in the refrigerator. You have to put in the refrigerator. And what you do, you put the onions, you put everything, including the oil, some of the oil. Put on top. You can add, if you want to, some ground black pepper after you pass it. A little bit of salt too, if you want to. The important thing is to put this in the refrigerator. Preferable overnight or several hours. It has to cool down to get that taste, but overnight does the trick perfectly. 